All right, in this bonus video, we're going to take our Adventures of Mario game and make it a little bit more realistic and a little bit more challenging. What we're going to do is we already have our Goombas here, but they're stationary. We're going to make the Goombas move, uh, so that way we can actually get them to move back and forth. And there's a couple things we have to talk about. And I'm just going to real quick disable my timer. Um, so I'm just going to give us much time. A lot of time here so we can talk about it. All right, so looking at our Goombas, if we make them move back and forth, we need to keep a couple things in mind. The first is how far we want them to go. So if we call this our starting position here, S, and let's say I want this Goomba to be able to walk from here to here, we need to know what this distance is. So we'll call that D, okay? We also need, so we need to know our starting position, we need to know our distance, we need to know how fast they're going to go back and forth, um, as well as which direction they're traveling. So are they traveling either left? Are they traveling right? And what speed are they going to travel? And we can either make it where the Goombas move simultaneously, same speed back and forth, or if they want to move kind of independently, we'll get into that as we go. But let's start by creating some variables to keep track of this new information, starting with the starting position, uh, the distance that it can travel, and the direction that it's traveling, and the speed that it's traveling to make our Goombas uh, move where we want them to be. All right, so that being said, let's start our code here. In global, let's go to our Goombas. Where's our Goomba code right here? And I'm just gonna add a new little subsection for moving Goombas. All right, so we're gonna need our positions, our initial starting positions for both, um, both Goombas because the X position is gonna no longer be static. It's not always gonna be 200. It's gonna be changing depending on where the Goomba is. So we're gonna make a G1 position and I'm gonna make that 200. And of our G2, position, which is going to be, uh, where's our first one, 550. Okay, so that's going to be equal to the same spot. So these are starting position, actually, really, these are center positions, center positions for our Goombas. All right, we need a speed. So we'll say var uh, g speed, let's just say two, how fast Goombas move, var g uh, direction. Um, we'll set that equal to one. So the comment for that is one is move one moves right and negative one would move left. Uh, and I think that's all we need. Oh, and G distance, right? G bar G distance, which we'll just say is 50. So this is how far can Goombas go? All right, so we have our starting positions, we have our speed, we have our directions, and we have our distance for our Goombas. Let's scroll down to our game where we actually drew the Goombas. Coins, here we go, Goombas. Here's our hit Goombas for Goomba 2. Let's make a new subsection called moving Goombas. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna make these Goombas move. So we're just gonna say that G1X now equals G1X plus G speed times G direction. So this is saying that the relation or the position of G1X is gonna be affected by the speed and the direction. They're gonna be multiplied. So if the direction is negative one, the speed will be a negative speed, so therefore the Goomba is going to move to the left. If the direction is positive one, the speed is going to be a positive number, so the Goomba is going to move to the right. Uh, let's just press play real quick, and there we go. Goomba one moves. Now we want uh, them both to move, so let's just copy this code real quick. Oops, and set up for both Goomba one and Goomba two. Okay, so G one, G two. Right, so now both of our Goombas are gonna move. But we want them to move back and forth, and that's where the position variable comes into place. So basically we're gonna say that if we've exceeded the right-hand side, then change direction, start going left. If we've exceeded the left-hand side, change direction, start going right. 
So we're just going to drop in two if statements. If g1 x is greater than or equal to g1 position uh, plus g distance, actually, sorry, so that's just for the right hand side. So that's if the g1 x is greater than the position plus the g distance. So that's we've exceeded the right hand side um, of our Goomba. Or to do an or it's in a vertical line. Okay, so that shift and then the little bracket or the, the, uh, the slash underneath the backspace key. Or g1 x is less than or equal to g1 position minus g distance. Exceed distance allowance. Then we want our g direction to equal g direction times negative 1. Change direction. So that's going to change the direction to be the opposite way. Close g1. And let's just copy this guy. I'm just going to drop in two quick comments here. So this is Goomba1, Goomba2. Let's paste this if statement for Goomba2 and just change all of our G1s to G2s real quick. So G2, 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 close G2. Looks good. Let's press play. There we go. Our Goombas are moving back and forth. Now they're moving in sync. Let's say that we wanted them to not be in sync. So let's say that I wanted this bottom guy to be able to go the entire length of the floor here. And this top one looks fine. I like it. He's going back and forth on the platform. That's cool. So let's go up to global. And let's break this up here a little bit. So we're going to basically speed. They can both go at the same speed. So that's not going to uh, change. Um, however, the direction and the distance is going to now be unique per Goomba. So I'm going to copy this here and make it G1 direction, G1 distance, G2 direction, G2 distance. Um, I like G2 is going to stay the same. G1 is going to start by moving the opposite way. So we'll start him in the opposite direction so these guys won't be moving in sync. And I'm going to let him move 200 pixels rather than 50 pixels. So G1, which is the guy on the floor, is going to be able to move much farther than G2. All right. So let's scroll down to our if statements that we created for our Goomba moving. And all we have to do is for the direction and the uh, distance variables, we have to add a one and a two. So this G distance and this G direction. So G one direction, G one distance, G one distance, G one direction, G one direction. And right here, G two direction, G two distance, G two distance, two direction and two direction. So now these guys have their own unique directions and their own unique distances. Let's press play. I'm going to move Mario because I think he's going to get hit. There we go. So they're now moving in their own unique way. And I'm just going to go back up to my global and fix my countdown timer. So instead of having 10,000 seconds, we're back to having 50. So now this game just became significantly harder. Oops, missed my coin. Only five seconds. Ah, I lost. But there you go. 